two. The last time they played was in the first round of last year's Denmark Open. That was a 750 event. Of course, these All England Championships are a 1,000 event. We have four 1,000 events each year, and uh, they are the highest tier of tournaments within the World Tour, apart from, of course, the World Tour Finals, which is even bigger prize money, but World Tour Finals is just for the top eight players and pairs in each of the five disciplines, and you qualify by your results from all World Tour tournaments throughout the year. So the delightful Cho Tian Chen of Chinese Taipei, uh, really a, a lovely individual who's had his troubles in uh, the last uh, 14 months. At 34 years of age now, born in Taipei. And as you can see, he's a former world number two, 33 consecutive weeks before the rankings were frozen during the COVID pandemic. This is his 12th appearance at the All England Championships and he reached the final as the number one seed back in 2020, losing out to Victor Axelsson in the final. He's also been in a couple of semi-finals. That was back in 2017 and two years ago as well. Jonathan Christie is 26 years of age recently married and even more recently announced that he and his wife are expecting their first child many congratulations to them from all of us 179 uh, that's about five foot ten uh, so slightly shorter than his opponent Cho Tian Chen we saw was 180 which is five foot eleven He's currently number nine on the world rankings, but exactly the same as his opponent. He too has been as high as world Ready number two. In fact, a year ago at the All England Championships, he was the number two seed. This is his eighth appearance at the All England, and he's been in one quarter final. Uh, that was in 2022, and considering I've already told you that Cho Tian Chen was in the semi-final that year. Obviously, he won that quarter-final two years ago, Cho Tian Chen. So our court officials for this one, both from England, Lizzie James and Gavin Smith. And I was telling you that Cho Tian Chen has had his troubles just over a year ago, 14 months ago. He went for uh, a physical uh, a Ladies medical. and gentlemen, I'll tell you more on my right, Jonathan Christie, Indonesia. And on my left, Chow Chen Chen, Chinese Taipei. Chow Chen Chen to serve the full play. So the former finalist, Chow Chen Chen, of Chinese Taipei getting this first round in the singles underway. Neither of these players are seeded in same this same year's there. championships. I was telling you, Cho Tian Chen went for a full medical exam uh, in January last year, and he was diagnosed with the early stage of colon cancer. Had part of his colon removed with Two surgery, love. and straight after the surgery, returned to the world tour and didn't actually discuss it for some considerable time, kept his diagnosis uh, to himself. We all wondered why his form had dropped a little, uh, but I think he's made a remarkable return. I'm Jill Clark, delighted to say that Steve Pedersen is sitting alongside me as always. Uh, he is a light, delightful character, isn't he? Cho Tian Chen, he really has done well coming back from such a serious illness. Exactly, and uh, nobody really knew. We could see that he was not playing to the best of his ability, but um, Four, love. And what a story. And what a comeback. It must have been a huge relief winning that title in uh, Thailand Masters. Earlier this year, yeah. indeed, in Bangkok. And he is playing an awful lot of badminton, Chilk. Yeah. This is his seventh World Tour event in the seventh Five, World love. Tour event of the year. Jonathan. And at the end of last year, he played nine tournaments in nine weeks. Yeah. 
But this is a wonderful start by Jonathan Christie. Five love in this opening game. me Six. I was on Love. the verge of saying how brilliantly set up the rally was Lunges. the cross-court smash and the follow-up was brilliant yeah, he was actually there in quite good time Joel just to miss it well, championship bronze medalist Cho Tian Chen in Tokyo in 2022 coming back in the quarter-final against his opponent of today from 15-20 down in the third game, saving five match points. It was one of the most extraordinary matches I'd seen. And that, that sort of, I mean, given, given the um, Asian Games final, but the quarter-final there, that made this encounter between these two players an instant classic. Yeah. You're always talking about that match. Yeah. And rightly so. Huge event in the Asian Games. Well, Jonathan Christie couldn't have had a better start, and that's good to see from the Indonesian because he's played four tournaments uh, this year and lost in the first round of three and the second round of the fourth. Last week in Paris, he was the defending champion and lost in the first round to Wang Su Wei. Oof, ambitious. Attempted backhand smash. One, eight. Victoria Cao, Chu Tian Chen's uh, biggest supporter. Also, his physio. He doesn't have a coach, he doesn't. Uh, want to coach complicating his thought process well we've got our first now of course steen you've been a coach by uh, trade as it were and one of the world's very best coaches uh, when you were heading up the danish national team uh, you think it's quite extraordinary not to have a, a coach don't you? that's understandable from your point of view that, that he's chosen not to have that, a coach. That, that you think it's Oh, extraordinary. yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. But, but I can understand the thought process because we can see that sometimes you have different coaches and um, it can also be beneficial at times, but I think mostly in, in practice, I think the development is that you got to have a, a reasonably close relationship um, with your players to be able to help in the right way, push the right, right buttons. Otherwise, you might accidentally push the wrong buttons, and I guess that's what uh, Cho is uh, a bit afraid of. Yeah. I mean, if you have a close relationship, it happens from time to time as well. Steen, did you notice or pay attention to who won the toss of the coin? No, I'm afraid I didn't. No. start by Jonathan Christie I don't think anybody thought it would be this scoreline at the start of this match 11-2 advantage in the opening game Turn to court, and in answer to my own question, 
it was Jonathan Christie who won the toss of the coin and chose ends. 11 well, I know we're only on day two, Steen, but we saw yesterday that there is most definitely a faster end. Yeah. And Jonathan Christie is playing with the drift at the moment, we believe. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. We've seen players uh, having trouble getting the correct length on their shots. When uh, Normally it's when, you, when you're playing with the drift, but it's also been, look at this, a bit short from uh, Chalk. So it's been difficult also for the players playing up against the drift to give it that little bit extra. Oh, that's lovely. What a good smash. Quite interesting, in my opinion. So far, we've seen a number of players sort of reversing the fortunes from uh, from last week, earlier on today. Um, Lisi Jart, who lost to um, Danish youngster Magnus Johansson in uh, Paris, he uh, defeated Kura Naoka and, and played absolutely brilliant. So um, he's Naro not the only one. Naoka was the World Championship silver medalist last year. He was, and I mean. Obviously, one of them had to change their fortunes because yeah. Naroka also lost in the first round, so it's a, it was a bit of a cheap one. But yeah. but um, no, I I I, I think that, there's, there's yeah. Further examples, the way I see it, uh, Cheng and uh, Chang, the uh, Chinese women's double, getting revenge from last week, Michelle Lee getting revenge from German Open. Three, uh, so uh, you really have to get over a defeat quickly and be ready and dialed in for the next tournament. It's interesting in talking Four, about 14. changing fortunes and so on. When you look at the two players on court, neither seeded, of course, but Jonathan Christie, it's the first time in five years that he's not been a seed. And number two seed last year, Cho Chen Chen, has been seeded seven so times that. previously. Was he seeded seven last year? It, not last year. In uh, 2020, okay. he was number one, but he's been seeded yeah. altogether seven yeah. times from his previous 11 All England appearances. Yeah. Oi, oi, oi. Yeah. And good follow-up as well by Jonathan Christie. Well, I wasn't expecting this sort of start to the match at all. No. I think Christie, he, he probably chose to play the near side here because he expected that the other side was a bit easier to play. Yes, I think so too. It, it's different in doubles and singles, isn't it? Because yeah, in doubles, um, I, I felt that when we were watching yesterday, players hitting with the drift were getting an advantage. Whereas in the singles, when you're trying to use the full court and push your opponent to the back, then bring them forward, if you're hitting with the drift, then there's a strong possibility you can hit long of the back line. And therefore, you tend to attack more than you would normally want to do, and you don't manoeuvre your opponent in the same way. So I think it's easier to play in singles against the drift. Yeah, mo most players, I think, would agree, especially in men's singles players, whereas in the women's singles, yeah, basically in all disciplines, it depends a little bit on uh, the speed of the shuttles, but in women's singles, it can be difficult. Oh, this is a score, isn't it? 18-4. The good news for Cho is that he hasn't spent a lot of energy. <laughs> oh, yes, good follow up. My goodness, he's looking sharp.
pushed it long, and it's game point opportunities already. Game point four. What an extraordinary opening game. wrong it's game over even if he's right I'm pretty certain it's only delaying the inevitable yeah <laughs> there's a good chance of that must be one of the absolute quickest men's singles games in a super thousand tournament yeah So, game. opening game to Jonathan Christie, 21 4. First game by Jonathan Christie, 21 4. Absolutely extraordinary. I think that's just under 12 minutes, you know. I can hardly believe it. But all credit to this man. looking a little shell-shocked at the moment is Chorty and Chen. Yeah, get all the rackets out, choose the best one, which is the lucky one. Of course, players don't have lucky ones. Second I game. never knew one racket for another. Love all. Uh. Play. Is that why I didn't win the All England? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I recall when I was a kid in a camp, there was the lucky T-shirt. Oh, I didn't say I didn't have a lucky T-shirt. Ah, OK, OK. Lucky racket, because if the strings break, you, you know, psychologically, if you've broken your lucky racket, that's a big uh, minus, isn't it? Yeah. Well, day four, it wasn't oh. a great smell of that T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, something's not entirely right with Cho Tien Chen. We take nothing away from Jonathan Christie. Short again. Oh, he may have broken the strings of his racket. Christy. Oh, that's a lovely shot. Super Jersey shot. Man. One, two. Well, it has been 30 years since a player from Indonesia won the All England Championships. In fact, 30 years ago, it was an All Indonesian affair. Haryanto Arbi beat Adi Wiranata in the final. Yeah. And who was the last uh, finalist, uh, Steen? Do you remember? Yeah, I think you. it was uh, Taufik in uh, 1999. Do you know, there was one after that. There was? There was Budi Santoso. Budi Santoso. In 2002. 
Lost to Chen Hong. It's a good thing we didn't have a cup of tea in that one. <laughs> I might have had some tools, but then I would have guessed a Simonson tools. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think he ever made it. I don't think he made it to the final either. Obviously, he didn't, but probably not um, close to that. Well, the last semi finalist, you were right to mention Taufi Kidiat from Indonesia. The last Indonesian semi finalist was 15 years ago. Uh, when uh, Taufik in 2009 lost to Li Chong Wei, yeah. who then lost in the final. You think of all the great Indonesian players who have graced the courts at the All England Championships, it seems an eternity since an Indonesian men's singles player actually won this title. Save, save yeah, that. Two, that's true. three. Rudy Hartono, eight titles. Yem Sui King, he won three. Oh, oh that's well played. See, I'm showing my age again now to the screen with all these players who won in the uh, 70s and 80s. I think Lim Shui King, he probably could have won a title in, uh, in men's styles had he uh, put his mind to it. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. Maybe he has. No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. But he played a... Uh, I think he won a, a medal at singles and doubles at the World Championships. Played not, with, not the All England. Played with... Um, Christian had an answer. That's right. King and Christian. has been sort of recalled as a consultant for the um, Indonesian uh, team. He used to be the men's doubles coach um, some years ago now because Henry King Bardi took over from him. Basically, those two built the dynasty that we've seen from the Indonesian men's doubles. Yeah, yeah. And we'll be watching. One of those uh, pairs a little later on. The Sun and City won four time finalists. That will be our last match of the day. So plenty to look forward to. That's well left. Save, save there. Four, five. Well, normally, Steen, I'd be saying to you, what does the player that's trailing need to do to turn this around? But first things first, Chilti and Ken just needs to find some. A bit of rhythm and find his form. Can't talk about tactics yet. No, it's about getting into the match and realizing that it's probably going to be tough. With us last week, uh, you might have heard Matthias Bo in the finals say to his um, players, Ranky Reddy and Shetty, the winners of men's doubles, the goal is five points, first to five. And I suppose he's sort of uh, divided into bits of five points. All along the way. Yeah. Same, Here same, it might be wise six, to say it's five. to try and play each rally as good as possible and see what happens. Divide it into believable chunks, in other words. Don't focus on winning the entire game. Some coaches would say just focus on the next rally. That's uh, a bit of a cliche on, yeah. in sport, isn't it? But Good that's shot. A nice shot there. So that's goodness. Seven, five. That looked like a really strong deception from um, Jonathan Christie, judging from the body language of uh, Cho. Let's see here. Yeah. The movement of the racket. Played a long straight. Well, cert certainly, Indonesian coach. He once, yeah, enjoyed it. Oh! No, 
Oh, there's, he, there's something wrong with Yeah, he's not moving well. And his movement is one of his biggest assets, isn't yeah. it? You only have to look at the man. I mean, you know, he's so athletic and strong, but he's not moving well today at all. challenge needing to recompose the sorts here we go indeed challenge that was successful. Long. one challenge remaining Step defense wasn't able to go for it. Does he have his? Oh, he has a strap in there, doesn't he? On the right side of his right knee. Was it just the reflections? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if he does have a strap in. He's played so much badminton in the last 12 months. Yeah, finds the line. but he does need to get the scores a little closer before the game into Cho Tian Chen because this is a match that I had so been looking forward to. I thought this could be a marathon affair. Yeah, another error from Cho Tian Chen and his body language is not good. It is a four-point advantage to Jonathan Christie at the mid-game interval, having already won the first. Well, this is the warm-up area and I can uh, tell you that on the far court there are our women's doubles pairs who are going to play the next match and they won't have expected this one to be going this quickly so they're just going through their final preparations women's doubles of course we've got the defending champions next Kim So Young and Kong Hee Young of Korea So it's now or never, I think, for Cho Tian Chen. Yeah. four of the last five points to this man, Cho Tian Chen. Oh, the defence.
Askins. Second time he's been totally off Same on that one. Left. Jonathan Christie, low centre of gravity, moves smoothly. And he's one of the players that can do well in all kinds of uh, playing conditions. He can play in drifty conditions, he can play in slow playing conditions. When he's in good shape, I um, often uh, stated that I think it's very important for both him and compatriot Anthony Ginting to be absolutely sharp um, form-wise to uh, be competitive. Anthony Ginting, incidentally, I played yesterday. He was the number five seed and he won his match also against a player from Chinese Taipei, Li Chia Hao. With a guess, I would think that um, Joel is feeling uh, a little bit ill. It looks that way to me. Yeah. There's definitely something not right. Yeah. Yeah, you're right about the strapping on the right knee. into the next um, two tournaments. Oh, well, hang on, wait a minute. I'll come back to that in a minute, uh, Steen, because the line judge indicated in, then changed her mind to out, by which time Cho Tien Chen had challenged, but the call was out. So he's challenging uh, his own point now. Yeah. I don't think the umpire realised that. Indeed, he was right anyway. I suppose. Sorry, Steen, you were saying that Charles, he's entered into uh, the Swiss Open next week and the... And the Spain Masters. Good The Lord. week after. So he's playing five tournaments here in uh, Europe. I noticed the band on the uh, shuttles. That's the old England uh, logo. That's it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. It's a lovely touch. Oh, that's quick from Christie. Wonderful movement. Wonderful anticipation. Watch how he moves forward. One little step and then a big lunge. But he's still on balance as he plays that final shot, should he need to play another shot within the rally.
first of the match so far. Oh, that's nice. And again, Chiu Chien Chen didn't react. Oh, but look, but look at the um, celebration from Jonathan Christie. I think that was important. I think he was a little bit, um, wouldn't say nervous, but but he was alert that 16, 13, that, that's only three points. They can yeah. disappear um, quickly. And, and should Chow be able to come back here and steal the second game, then, then it's one game all, and yeah. he's got as good a chance as any. There's no extra points for winning 21-4 in the first. Indeed, it was the longest rally, 32 shots. Wow, that's Thank not going for many singles, is it? And that's the longest so far. after that defensive shot. points away from victory, Jonathan Christie. 35 minutes yeah. so far played, but it's, it's not the um, shortest match, shortest match so far in the first round. That was Axelsen against Strika, that was 33. And Kalong lost in 35 minutes, and Kurai Naroka, who normally plays so long matches, lost in 35 minutes to uh, gracious. So. Uh, it seems like we have some challenging conditions where yeah. either you get used to it here or you bow out. And uh, service error. That's the last thing Chorty and Chen needed. opportunities for Jonathan Christie. <laughs> First time of asking. And he was a class above Cho Tien Chen today was Jonathan Christie. 21-4, 21-15 in a match lasting just shy of 37 minutes. Well, match one by Jonathan Christie, 
he started in great form, Christy. In my opinion, there was clearly something wrong with Cho Tien Chen. But how nice to see Christy playing well after struggling in his first four tournaments of the year. So, safely through to the second round, Jonathan Christy. And we don't yet know who he will play in tomorrow's second round encounter. 21-4, 21-15 in 37 minutes. This is the final rally and the final net shot from Cho Tien Chen or attempted block back to the net. He's perhaps not 100% feeling that well. Yes, there's so much to do here at the Utilita Arena. The fans aren't only enjoying the badminton, the merchandise stores, there's places to eat and drink. But the badminton is what they've really come for. And next up, we have defending champions in the women's doubles. The number three seeds, Kim So-yong and Kong Hee-yong, are 